Zach here, and it's a cool and balmy morning in northern New Mexico. I'm getting ready to head out down to Albuquerque this morning to do some thrifting out of town. My daughter has a competitive gymnastics meet in Roswell, New Mexico, so I might even do some thrifting there. Gonna take you along and show you the things I buy to resell for profit. Follow along. I've time traveled uh, about two and a half hours south from where I live to uh, Bernalillo, New Mexico, which is outside of Albuquerque. I'm going to go ahead and hit this Goodwill real quick, see what I can't come up with. So my big plan of attack today is to try to hit as many Goodwills and I might even hit a Savers here in just a little bit and just cover some ground. I haven't been doing any garage sales the last few weeks and I really haven't been thrifting much. And so I've been taking some good profits, but I need to get back into buying some stuff because that's how this business works. This is a pretty good find here. But unfortunately it looks stained, so I don't know if I can get that stain out. I might be able to, but Grayson's a very good brand. And I think I might go ahead and take a chance on it. And he's always gotta look at the toys. Check the men's shoe aisle. I didn't see much, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and look through the woman's aisle here. This is a much smaller store and I don't find much here ever, so I'm probably gonna cut out of here pretty quick. Can source a whole lot there. I never seem to find anything at that Goodwill, but it's right off the beaten path when I get into Bernalillo. And so now I'm gonna head down into Rio Rancho. There's a Goodwill Threads and a Savers and a couple other Goodwills on the way. So I'm gonna hit all of those. I'll be sharing with you the things I source and uh, We'll see what I can't find. It's about 10 miles down the road in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, and I have been to this Goodwill in the past. I was able to find a pretty nice Carhartt vest last year and a couple shirts. It's pretty small, so I'm gonna race through it pretty quick, and then I'm gonna get onto the Goodwill threads and maybe even the Savers next door, which is just a few miles down the road. Most thrift stores, I always come back to the jacket aisle for the money. I find that I get the most uh, return on my investment. So I'm gonna burn through all these uh, hoodies, jackets, see what I can't find. Jackets here, so I'm gonna burn through some dress shirts, see what I can't come up with. Big strike out at this store, but that's okay. I got a lot of options today. I'm gonna go ahead and race down and check out the next place. I found myself about three miles down the road from the last Goodwill and I'm outside of this Goodwill Threads and just across the street here, or lost, at least I should say across the parking lot is a Savers. I have found a number of good things at this Goodwill Threads in the past. It is smaller, but it seems to carry more like of a boutique feel. It's a lot nicer inside and the quality of what's in there is a lot better. So I'm going to see what we can't come up with. Well, unfortunately, I didn't find much in the Goodwill Good Thread store. Kind of disappointed in that, but uh, that's all right. I'm going to keep it positive. And I always say this in these videos you got to keep your intentions up. So, this Savers I've been in before and I never found anything. It is huge and you can actually get lost inside of it. So, I'm going to try to keep it pretty short. I'm a sucker for Star Wars and that's the ugliest Jabba the Hutt coffee mug I've ever seen and I don't think I've actually ever seen a Jabba the Hutt coffee mug. On this all wool vintage Beretta men's jacket and it's in pretty good shape and I looked it up and found a couple that sold for about 40 to 50 bucks so I'm gonna grab it. So I really like the way Savers uh, racks up their jeans. It makes it real easy for somebody to come up and just identify a vague pair. And then you can also see the size much easier. So I'm not gonna spend too much time here uh, just because you can get lost, like I said, in a store like this. And I really wanna cover some ground. I haven't found much else, but uh, some Ariat jeans. Hmm, I'm gonna check these out. It's a pair of Hoka's, but there are 24 bucks and they're an older style, so I'm gonna zip past these. So I went ahead and picked up the Beretta vintage wool coat but didn't really find anything else. Probably spent a little bit longer than I wanted to in there and I tell you what Savers is huge. You could really get lost in there but I am on a time constraint today and I just want to try to make as many stores as I can. So what I'll probably do is maybe hit one more Goodwill on this side of town and then I'll cross over to the river, hit the side that's known as Albuquerque and see what I can't find over there. This is the fourth Goodwill I've been to in the last couple hours and the fifth thrift store. Hopefully I find a little bit more in here. I found this cinch hard shell fleece line jacket for men. It does have a little spot that's uh, somewhat damaged but it's a great brand. I've sold one that was great, kind of like it. So I'm gonna grab it. Hey, I found this Wrangler uh, brush popper. It's gray, got white pearl snaps and I sold one like it before and the price looks pretty good. It's gonna need uh, washed a little bit of a stain around the collar. 
but uh, I'm gonna grab this. Came to this stop at this Goodwill was Country Western because I was able to find a cinch hard shell jacket and I did pick up the uh, heavy weight Wrangler Pearl Snap shirt. I'm gonna go ahead and race across the river now and get into Albuquerque, hit a few of the thrift stores that are on the Northeast Heights. And then after that, I'm gonna go ahead and make my way down to Roswell, New Mexico, where I'm gonna stay the night and we'll go from there. We're hitting hard today. All right, this is the sixth Goodwill I believe I've been to today. Hopefully it's better. So just as I was getting ready to head out, I got into my old friend, uh, my summer companion, one of my favorite brands to sell. Uh, do a lot of gorp or adventure gear, adventure hiking, clothing, and outdoor apparel. And here's another pair right here. So be looking for that little shield. So just left that Goodwill and at least grateful to have came across a couple pair of cool shorts. I can't sell those right now, obviously, but they will sell well in springtime. Cool is a hot seller for me. It's a bread and butter item. And there were seven bucks, which is kind of paying up. But back where I live, I would easily probably pay $9.99 for them same shorts. So glad to find some lower prices down here. The decreased prices are just marginal, but there are some better deals down here. There is more competition. There's a gentleman right behind me that's loading up his SUV and it's just packed with clothes and hard goods and skis. And he had a shopping cart in there that was packed with stuff. But um, nonetheless, it is one o'clock now. I'm gonna get down the interstate, drive a little ways, kind of decide if I might hit one, maybe two more Goodwills, or if I'm just gonna go ahead and make the pilgrimage south. I still got a lot of driving to do and it's getting into the early afternoon, so I don't wanna be out on the road too late because some of the highway I'm taking is a little desolate and a little remote, but I appreciate you following along and I'll be back with more footage here pretty quick. This might be my last thrift stop of the day. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully I find some goods in here. I haven't came up with as much as I'd hoped I said, but never know. See what we can find. It's a super cool J.C. Higgins vintage ice chest and then the old classic Coleman from back in the day. Not gonna pick it up, but just cool to admire. So I found this Le Creuset whistling tea kettle uh, just back off on a shelf, kind of obscure. And uh, odd part is I just sold one this morning, but it was red, crazy. It's a super cool find. It's a Dansk enamel Copen Styler Dutch oven. I'm gonna grab it. They look like they go for about 40 to 50 bucks. This is definitely the nicest Goodwill I've been to today, but the clothes are upper quality, but they are priced upper tier. Found these Ariat jeans, and Ariat jeans sell quick for me. They're in pretty good shape. It would be paying up, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab them because it's a solid seller. All right, so I'm definitely gonna scoop up these two enamel pieces. This stop was the vintage enamel and high-end kitchenware stop. And I'm also gonna grab the Ariat pants. I think I'm gonna hit the road. It's probably the score of the day. I'm definitely gonna be paying for it. I'll probably just keep it for myself. Fire. All right, so definitely stoked about that stop. Finding that Arcteryx was definitely a pump up from the slow morning I had earlier. And then finding the Le Creuset as well as the Dansk enamel Dutch oven was a score. They were both super cheap and I can sell those for good money. And the Ariat jeans is just kind of a bread and butter find. I'm gonna go ahead and race down the road. Happy to find this place. I'd never been to this Goodwill. It was much nicer and had much nicer inventory. It was more expensive, but I found better things and I don't mind paying up to make money. I'm in Roswell, New Mexico. I have uh, got here a couple hours ago, went ahead and ate some Thai food, kind of relaxed, took a shower, and now I'm outside of this Goodwill. This is the ninth Goodwill I've been to today, or the eighth, something like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and race in here, look around. It's about to close in about an hour, but uh, I'll probably come back in the morning. There is a Salvation Army here in Roswell, as well as a Humane Society thrift store. So definitely probably hit some of those after my daughter's gymnastics tournament tomorrow, but uh, see what, we can't come up with. If my daughter was here, she would say one word. Creepy. I'm back to that game of flipping through shirts, and I'm not sure why I'm looking through t-shirts. I don't usually look through t-shirts, so I'm gonna move over here to uh, some buttons. Bunch of vintage Wrangler shirts. Unfortunately, these are all kind of common prints. A couple Panhandle Slims. This one here, though, I might grab just because it's got the uh, extra long tails. It's a little bit cooler uh, looking but it isn't any upgraded material. It's just the cotton polyester blend, kind of the lightweight material. So I'm always looking for Wrangler shirts with the print or with the Aztec Southwest design. On these Ariat M7 uh, denim jeans, they're just a weird, 
brown color. I'm gonna grab them though, a little pricey. On this Cowgirl Hardware puffer vest and it does have some embroidery. It needs a lint roller. It's probably worth a grab. Probably not a lot of money in it, but I've sold several of these before. One thing I love about sourcing and reselling is all the cool vintage stuff I come across. And even if I'm not interested in buying it, I just admire old, cool, retro stuff. Shoe rack at this Goodwill ain't worth a darn, but I uh, found a couple things, so I'm happy with that. Especially for this late in the evening. Some old school vintage Christmas lights. They don't make them quite like this anymore. Me too. Definitely no truer statement. Walking out of the Goodwill here in Roswell, New Mexico with uh, one puffer vest and a pair of area jeans. Nothing real great, but some bread and butters and I'll take those all day. Shaped up to be a pretty good day. I'm gonna definitely uh, continue this video tomorrow after my daughter's uh, gymnastics tournament. I'll be out on the hunt. Probably do a little bit of thrifting around Roswell here. Hit the Salvation Army, hit the Humane Society thrift store maybe a few of the other thrift stores, and then I'll head myself back north towards Albuquerque. And I fast forwarded into the next day. I'm outside of the Salvation Army thrift store here in Roswell, New Mexico. I got a couple hours before my daughter's gymnastics tournament starts, so I'm gonna race in here, see what I can't find. I might even double back to the Goodwill I was at last night, just see if they put anything new out. Follow along. Morning. Morning. Stop shorts and everything today is 50% off. I'll go ahead and grab them and throw them in my spring summer death pile. I don't get a whole lot of, out of these, but they're only three bucks, so probably scoop them up. Haven't found anything else. These are Ariat Fat Baby boots, and these sell pretty easy, but these are just too beat up. But keep an eye out for just about anything Ariat. It uh, sells like a champ for me. All right, got another pair of men's uh, Carhartt ripstop shorts. These are a size 44, so they're very big, but if they're only three bucks, I'll grab them. Throw them in that spring. All right, so I've got a couple bread and butter finds. Wish I could have got a little bit more because half off is hard to beat, but they just didn't have much in there, but a lot of old junky brands and beat up junk. That's what junk stores have in them. Outside of the Assistance League thrift shop, I'm gonna race in here, keep it kind of short, just see what they got, and then get back on the road. I found this Peter Millar puffer. It does have some outside embroidery, but it's only four bucks. It's in pretty good shape. Nice colorway. Gonna grab it. I have one of my favorite outdoor brands. This is a Smart Wool Quarter Zip. It's women's, got a nice print and colorway, good condition, gonna grab it. All right, gonna grab this uh, Sherpa Cool Women's Coat. Sold this before last winter. It's only six bucks. All right, so I'm super glad I came into this thrift store. I was able to get a uh, Smart Wool Women's Quarter Zip. I got a cool Sherpa zip-up jacket and also a uh, Peter Millar puffer vest. It does have some embroidery, but it's pretty clean. So only spent like 13 bucks. That's a great deal. These prices are better than some of the bigger stores. But I got one more thrift stop to make, and then I'm going to go enjoy my daughter's competition. If you like this video, reach out and hit that like button. I appreciate it to roll into the Humane Society thrift store here in Roswell. This will probably be my last stop before my daughter's competition, but fortunately the competition's right up the road, so let's see what we can come up with. These Ugg Chuka boots, and they're a little dirty on the bottom. They have one stain on the back, but they're priced at 20, so I'm gonna think this one through. Ugg boots sell really good, and this time of year it's a pretty easy turn, but might pass on these. So, I haven't been able to find any clothing, but this is a super cool Hazel Atlas uranium glass refrigerator bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop it up for five bucks. I think there's some money in it. Parting ways with the Humane Society thrift store. I just bought the uranium glass uh, square fridge bowl. It was worth grabbing. Looked like some of them were selling for about 20 to 30 bucks online. Didn't pay five for it. It's got one little small chip on the interior lid. We're gonna go ahead and take a break from filming. Not sure if I'm gonna go ahead and thrift this afternoon in Albuquerque as my daughter's tournament got started a little bit later than I had thought it would. But nonetheless, if I don't do any more thrift and I will share all the things that I sourced at the end of this video. Thanks for joining. I appreciate you watching. So I have fast forwarded into the next day. I am back home from Roswell, New Mexico. I'm going to share with you my haul over 
several days of picking, I was able to come up with all these items after sourcing goods in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, as well as Albuquerque, and then also did some uh, sourcing in Roswell, New Mexico, as you've seen in the earlier part of the video. I'm gonna run through all these items, share with you some keywords I might use on them, tell you what I paid for them, tell you what I hope to sell them for, and express why I like these certain brands and why I keep coming back to them. Hopefully that helps you on your reselling journey and your adventures. I know videos like this were super helpful for me when I got started not that long ago. And so I hope for you that you're watching, you're educating yourself and you're increasing your knowledge base so that you can have more success with your reselling regardless of what it is. So I'm gonna jump back off this chair here and get up a little bit closer and share with you each of these items. So I scooped up this vintage Hazel Atlas uranium glass box with lid for $5. That was definitely paying up for something like this because I find stuff like this at flea markets and other thrift stores in my area for sometimes a lot cheaper. But this guy will sell online for somewhere between $18 to about $30. I will have to clean it up a little bit and get the Sharpie mark off the lid and off the bottom. But it was super cool. It was in pretty good condition and I love uranium glass. It's just cool to look at. So I'm gonna start this haul by sharing this two pair of men's area jeans. I love selling this brand. This is a bread and butter for me. It's generally a no-brainer as long as it's clean and in a good size. And so the top pair are just some medium wash men's dress jeans. I'm gonna use keywords like thick stitch, whiskered, boot cut. And then the bottom pair, I've never actually delved into this color of jean from area, but it's still a great brand, so I have confidence it'll sell. And I'll probably end up using words like travel, business, work. Some of those words will help kind of amplify the looks on the search that people are putting out there for these kind of garments. And so I love using good keywords. That's something I've been having more success with lately. And I also love Ariat jeans. They're just solid sellers for me. Probably the number one selling jean I use and sell in my store. So I'm going to move up now. And then I got two pairs of cool shorts. I picked these up at the Bernalillo Goodwill, if I remember right, and I did pay up on these. I paid seven and some change for each pair. That's definitely paying up for shorts, but this is also a bread and butter brand. And so with these shorts, I would use keywords in my description like hiking, camping, gorp, gorp core, mountains, mountaineering, through hiking, anything like that to catch the attention of outdoor goers that are looking for garments like these, that'll just help pump your sales some more. Now, this shirt right here, I was um, under the impression was a men's and I was just gonna keep it for myself, but this is an Arcteryx zip-up knit jacket for women and I did pay up on this. I paid $20 and I believe I found this at the end of my sourcing day in Albuquerque. I was under the impression, again, it was a men's garment, but nonetheless, Arcteryx Men's and Women's has an incredible sell-through rate. And so even though I paid $20 under the impression that I thought this was a men's garment and I was just gonna snag it for myself, I'll still probably be able to sell this for somewhere between 60 to 80 bucks off the top of my head. And I don't even look up Arcteryx anymore. If I see the little dinosaur skeleton or the name Arcteryx, which can sometimes be vague on a lot of garments, I just snag it, it's a no-brainer. And this here is a smart wool quarter zip for women. It's got kind of a cool geometric, almost camo-like feel to the uh, print on it. And smart wool is a no-brainer. I sell lots of smart wool garments because I source them in Colorado very regularly nearby where I live. There's a lot of skiers in the area. There's a lot of people that like to do outdoor stuff and smart wool sells to that demographic. And so outdoor adventure apparel and GORP is one of my favorite things to push in my store. And that's simply because as I've said in past videos, I can find it and find it very easily. I found this at Roswell at the, uh, oh, what was it called? The, uh, uh, something Alliance, uh, Assistance Alliance thrift store, I believe. I can't remember what it was called, but nonetheless, it's Merino wool. I paid like three bucks for it, I think, and I should be able to sell this guy for probably 35 to 40 bucks maybe. And I've had success selling all these type of smart wool garments in the past, so this one is definitely a, a keep. I would use Wicking Wool Merino Outdoors and any of those type of words to get more attention to this garment. And so I'm gonna slide over now, and I'm gonna share with you this, which was part of my country western haul at one of the stores I stopped at in Rio Rancho. This is a cinch hard shell jacket. It's got a few stains on it, and it also has some little small holes at the bottom of the zipper line. And so this guy is gonna to have to go for a little bit less, 
but cinch is also kind of like area it's a power brand and these people that like country western wear are into cinch they're into area so when i see that name or i see the label or the hit i'm after it i'm going to pick it up especially if it's in decent condition and this jacket's in decent condition not great so i'm hoping i could probably sell it for maybe 30 to 40 bucks maybe even a little bit more i'll have to look it up i just know this is a power selling brand and i would use keywords like rodeo cowboy farm ranch chore words like that are just going to help drive a better sale so use them keywords like i keep preaching now this is kind of a bread and butter go-to this is a heavy wrangler brush popper it's the thicker more durable material that i like to truly call a brush popper this is just a basic gray one i believe i paid like four and some change for it and these only sell for about 18 to 24 bucks and a lot of times on the lower end of that margin but i love selling western shirts i love the old pearl snaps and they do sell fairly quick uh, especially if they're the heavier material and they're fairly clean and so i'll use keywords like heavy durable work chore and again, cowboy, things like that will just help push it. And also put like oil field, heavy equipment operator, trucker, because those are the guys that wear these shirts and they're looking for them for a good deal. So now I'm moving up here. This is a cool Sherpa jacket. I only paid six bucks for this. This was also from one of the thrift stores in uh, Roswell, New Mexico. And so this guy here, I'm going to basically try to sell for probably between 40 to 50 bucks. I actually sold this same jacket last year, but it was at the tail end of winter. So it took a little while to sell and I may have had it priced up a little bit high, but I'll use keywords like Sherpa, hiking, camping, trekking, climbing, any of those words to get the attention of those outdoor folks. Now this guy right here, this green vest is a Peter Millar puffer. It does have some outside embroidery on it, which will take a little bit from the value. I don't buy a whole lot of Peter Millar anymore, but it is vest season. It is the cold weather season. And so vests are flying off my shelves right now and off my racks. So it's kind of a no brainer. I'm not sure what this guy will go for, but I imagine I could get somewhere between at least 35 to 45 bucks for it, hopefully. And if not, I only paid $3 for it. So it was definitely a good score. And I picked this up in Roswell. Now, this guy here is kind of a cool vintage find. I watch a reseller who said to always pick up Beretta, and this is an old Beretta shooting jacket. It is a wool blend, and so I'm definitely gonna put wool blend in the keywords. I'm gonna use a description of Beretta shooting jacket. I'll put outdoors, I'll put hunting, I'll put all those different words to catch the hunter's um, view online. And so I paid $10.99 for this. I did see some selling for between 40 to 50. So that gave me confidence it was worth the investment. And it, again, it is jacket season and I sell a ton of jackets, which I'm kind of getting low on. I've listed a lot of my jackets and I've been selling them like crazy. And so now I'm going to hop down here. A couple hard goods I picked up. The back is a Le Creuset Whistling Tea Kettle. It's a nice navy into ombre light, lighter blue. I did pay up on it. It was $8.24, but I probably could sell it for somewhere between $38 to $48. Chip some shipping on there. Add some shipping, I should say. And uh, it's pretty good find. I like Le Creuset. It's premium kitchenware. Um, they make nice pots and pans. I sell it all the time. It's one of my favorite brands to source, and I don't do a lot of functional wares or kitchen wares, but I do do some. But this guy down here is the one I want to share with you more. This is a Dansk vintage enamel Dutch oven. This guy's super cool. I only paid $5.24 for this at a thrift store in Albuquerque, New Mexico at a Goodwill. And so this was definitely one of the cooler finds. It was very cheap and I knew when I seen it that it was enamel, it was funky and it just caught my eye. So I grabbed it, I went and looked it up and I see them sell for between 38 to $48 all day long. Stuff like this is very sought after. And so again, I'll use those camping, outdoors, outside, hiking keywords to try to drive a quicker sale on this. I will have to clean these items. That's just how it is. But I like sourcing and reselling stuff like this. It keeps it interesting and it breaks the monotony of just doing clothing all the time. And so this guy, this gal right here is a, this is a quilted puffer. It's 
Cowgirl Hardware. I did pay eight bucks for it, but I've had success selling this brand in vests, whether it be children's, men's, or women's. And the back of it's got a nice, cool uh, upside down horseshoe or right side up horseshoe for good luck. It's embroidered. It's pretty. It's got a little bit of bling on it. And so I probably could sell this for around 30 bucks, I'm thinking. Haven't looked it up. It might take a little while to sell this, but again, it's vest season. So if I can pick up a decent brand and it's a vest in good condition, I'm going to do it. Now, this guy right here was one of the more questionable sales, but I'm not going to be out too much on it, and I think I can still make my money back pretty easily. This was one of the first items I bought, and I picked this up at a Goodwill in Bernalillo, New Mexico. This is a men's Grayson Extra Large Performance Golf Shirt, and I love Grayson. It's one of my favorite golf brands. I don't sell a lot of golf shirts, but I definitely sell Grayson, and I also love Roback when I can find them. This shirt, though, has pit stains, and it has a horizontal dark gray mark across it, and so unfortunately, I'm going to give this boy the power of OxyClean. I'm going to spray it with OxyClean, and then I'm going to soak it in OxyClean detergent probably overnight with a few other white garments I have that need some cleaning and hopefully I can pull the magic and uh, get this guy clean and sell it to some big time golfer somewhere for big money. Usually when these are clean I can sell them for 45 to 55 dollars depending on the print size and colorway. This guy here probably not going to be able to sell it for that much especially if I don't get it clean but even dirty I could get probably upwards of 20 to 30 dollars for it. If I can get it clean maybe 30 to 40 maybe even a little bit more. And so as you'll see this is my haul. It wasn't a great haul for as many thrift stores as I stopped at. I definitely hit a lot of them, but that's reselling. I accept it. And as I went on, I, I started finding more of my power bread and butter brands, the brands that I love that I'm always on the lookout for. And so I appreciate you joining. I know this video was long, but hopefully I gave you a lot to look at, some things to think about and some brands to pick up to resell so you have success. If you like this video, please hit like, make a comment or subscribe. This is Zach, full-time reseller. I'm out.